Elon GameStock and the Prisoner's Dilemma, we wanted to do a show today focused on what's been going on with games, uh, game stops. And we also wanted to review the fact that Elon weighed in and tweeted. And then we also wanted to sort of review what we think the end game of all this will be, uh, which is something called the Prisoner's Dilemma. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to thank our Patreon supporters. Your support is greatly appreciated and allows us to exist as a channel and be able to provide this service. So I wanted to, um, I was actually, uh, we teach options trading a lot and uh, we do so giving traders ideas on a daily basis on our Patreon page. So if you have an interest, you may want to sign up there because we cover Tesla mostly, but other companies as well that might be worth taking a look at their options and the trading process you might consider. So um, the way we're structuring this show today is we're, we're going probably, uh, one of my big disappoints about, about this show or any show is the fact that you have to sort of start off slowly and then get to fairly intense subject after the 10 minute mark. So if you're an advanced trader, I wanted to invite you to join us there. The problem you have is that if you're teaching an audience where you're working from novices all the way to experts, it's hard to have credibility at every point with everyone. So I will you know, make that as a proviso here. So as you know, GameStop uh, has been uh, experiencing huge growth, 100% gains on a daily basis. It's gone in the last couple of weeks from about $20 a share all the way up to $540 a share. I saw it at yesterday. And so the question is, now wait a second, what should you do right now? Because there's a lot of money being made and lost in the process. So phase one is just to review in general why this happens. So if you think about Enron and some of these other companies, basically what's happened is that there's a problem that GameStop is having, which is uh, um, you may want to take some time to just uh, look in Peter Lynch's book, One Up on Wall Street, because he describes why it is that GameStop is such a great company when he was reviewing it and the growth he was experiencing and how users were doing it was great. As you know, the problem that GameStop ran into is the same problem that uh, Blockbuster Video ran into. They had a good company, good product. Everybody was buying CDs or trading them in, etc. And then all that music moved online. So all of a sudden, there's no reason for Blockbuster to be there anymore because all their customers had moved on you know, to online streaming or other techniques to get their music. And so most of those record stores kind of disappeared with very limited numbers of them still existing. So the problem we have right now is basically uh, that with GameStop right now, it's a good company, their products are good, but particularly with the pandemic, a lot of their customers have moved online, so they're, they've lost growth. In some cases, they just, stores aren't operating, and sort of the game process is moving online, just like we've seen with uh, um, you know, video to some extent, AMC has had a, got a got caught in the same process where good company underlying no problem. Uh, but the problem is that if nobody's going to movie theaters because of COVID, and then now we have the possibility of the large uh, producers of movies saying, we're not going to send them through your movie theater uh, or, or allow online to compete at the same time with your movie theater. This is why AMC is also in the same boat as heading into bankruptcy. So I, um, this isn't working linear in terms of everything being covered because how Elon got into this, I wanted to cover. As you know, Elon did a tweet as all this was going on with GameStop. As a result of his tweet, there was like a $5 billion ad to the value of this whole thing. And so this adds to the craziness of the whole situation. So overall, what the story here is, is GameStop is a good company. Their customers have just started rolling online or they've had to shut locations uh, within malls, et cetera, because the, the customers just weren't coming. And so that's what has been causing their stock to go lower and lower heading for bankruptcy. And so in essence, 
in the bankruptcy restructuring, they weren't going to disappear. They're likely to redo their debt. But part of that would be the shareholders who own common stock would actually lose uh, all their money, whereas the bondholders and others would be fine in terms of getting repaid from the cash that was left over. So, as you know, typically when companies are going out of business, there are certain hedge funds that specialize in companies going out of business, and that process is kind of messy. Basically, they study the company carefully, write some reports, send it around, make sure it gets into the press, and then you have that news starting to force the stock price down. The one problem with this whole process of how it works is that there's something called loan covenants. So many big hedge funds got their money from large institutions like pension funds or entities that give them money to manage. And so the problem that's popped up is that all of them have what are called loan covenants. So what happens is that if they lose a certain amount of money, perhaps on one stock, uh, they actually are kind of stuck. They are required to cover their positions or buy the stock that they had been shorting. And so kind of what happened here with GameStop is some really bright people that were part of their Reddit group figured out what the covenant situation was for certain, a large number of hedge funds. And what they did was they engineered a process where the stock price started rising very quickly. And it was rising so quickly, in fact, that many of the loan covenants were hit by uh, several of these funds. So why is this a big deal? Well, once you hit the loan covenant, you have no choice. You have to close your position, meaning you have to buy the stock to cover the short position that you now are holding. And this is a disaster because you already have the pain of the fact that you bet the stock price was going to fall and it's rising dramatically. But you also have to buy the stock because <laughs> because you have to cover your position. So we're now in a crazy situation where um, you don't want the stock to rise if you're a hedge fund, but it continues to rise. And because you have to buy the stock, you're helping to push the stock price higher as well. So as a result, you have a double disaster where you lose money because your short position wasn't profitable and you have to use your money, the money you do have, to buy your way out of it. So one of the things that was described to us today is the fact that uh, there's a situation going on where the hedge funds may have several positions. I believe 5% is the maximum money within a fund that's allowed to stay within one stock. But today, we kind of had an interesting situation where the amount of money lost was so great that a lot of entities that were holding a broad range of high growth stocks like Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, have all had to say, oh, We've gotten lost so much money on the GameStop trade that, or AMC or some of the other uh, companies that have been, they've been shorting that they now have to sell large amounts of stock in successful companies in order to cover their short position. So as this process has been happening, hence why you see the gyration in stock price going on for uh, certain companies, including GameStop. So... I'd have to say I was kind of reluctant to do this uh, show because it, it kind of ends ugly. Um, it, there's a slim chance, like 5% chance, that Elon and a few other billionaires will get together and buy GameStop or buy up enough of their debt or equity to sort of keep the company from going to bankruptcy. But I got the impression that, you know, he was talking big through his Twitter, but Elon has the money to go in, in essence, um, squeeze the shorts. And so what that means is that there are certain very wealthy people who have the power to almost buy the company. And by doing so, they actually prop up the stock price. Now, this is really interesting because, you know, there's something called buy, there's something called selling a stock. Um, one of the things that can happen is that um, you now have the power of the web in the form of a Reddit able to mimic how very wealthy investors might uh, operate when it comes to working with a stock or its stock price. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, I wanted to give you an example of a, of a trade that occurred. I call it the, the Goldman Sachs overstock trade. 
Uh, a number of you have probably heard me talk about this, but if you really want to get into the weeds, I know about 10% of you are in retirement, and if you want to read something that sort of explains this thing, ice cold, no questions needed from anybody else, there was a situation where Goldman Sachs helped a hedge fund raise $3 billion, and that fund specialized in shorting stocks as they went out of business. So during the 2008 crash, you may recall, all those stocks were falling. Well, it turns out that Goldman did this little routine where they helped the hedge fund raise the money to actually be able to short stocks. One of the stocks was a company called Overstock.com. So what ended up happening is that um, Overstock uh, stock price started falling as we were going into the crash of 2008 and it was working perfect for the hedge funds. What then happened was Goldman Sachs knew what stock they were, head, they were shorting, number one, and they knew what their loan covenants were. So what Goldman did was they took the other side of the trade. They went ahead and bought large amounts of, of overstock stock as uh, the rest of the market was falling, and they kept buying those shares until the hedge fund was bankrupted. So all of that I just described is actually described in a lawsuit where the hedge funds shoot, sued Goldman Sachs. I didn't follow up to see um, how the judge ruled on it, but you see how one very large capitalized individual or investor or group of investors can get together and they can all of a sudden jump on a stock and they can push it uh, in the opposite direction of what they, the uh, well-known Wall Streeters want it to go in. And so this is in essence what happened in this case. So I kind of bring this up to you because, um, you know, we're going to hear and see a lot more about this. What's happening with this stock and others is because of these hedge funds losing so much money and having to sell the other stocks in their portfolio, they've actually put hundreds of points down on the rest of the Dow as they're pushing uh, game, game stock up. Now, the next idea I wanted to introduce is in economics, there's a concept called game theory. And one aspect of game theory is something called the prisoner's dilemma. So in its simplest term, let's say you have two people that are committed a crime together. What happens is that um, there are multiple things that can happen afterwards. If both people say nothing, they both go free. If one people person tells the truth and the other person does not tell the truth or, or says nothing, the one who says nothing goes to the jail. The one who ratted everybody out gets out free. So there is this dilemma, do you rat the person out or not? Well, it turns out this concept is called game theory and it turns out the way everything is priced. So for example, if let's say we have two gas stations that are two blocks from each other, right? If one gas station chooses a price and the price is double at the gas station two blocks away, you're in a dilemma. You lose your gas station because nobody will buy from you. They'll just go to the gas station two blocks away. So there's this dilemma between the two entities on how to price their product or service. And if you're not, um, staying in line with competitors to some extent, you end up losing all your customers. Elon Musk is a great sort of analyzer of the idea of, uh, of game theory. So think about it. What Elon pointed out was that he fired the previous CEO because that CEO lied to him when he told him we have to have a $100,000 car. That CEO, former CEO, Mr. Eberhardt, uh, actually was delivering a $150,000 car and he knew it. But he was hoping that, uh, you know, Elon would go for it once it was done. But Elon, maybe from an employer or something, figured out what was going on and fired him. And then they got to work producing a Model X S that didn't exceed $100,000 as he had requested. And that's when he took over as CEO again. So in essence, on car prices, there's a prisoner's dilemma. Will you sell your car for $200,000 or will you sell it for 50 grand or whatever that price may be, the lower the price is, the more people that can afford it, therefore the more cars that you sell. So I bring up the prisoner's dilemma in this case because there's a problem brewing. I literally got a text. Um, there's a friend who is uh, 
been working hard and making a lot of money and she asked about the situation and wanted to get in and I actually reviewed with her um, what was going on um, with GameStock and actually instructed her on how to get in on uh, pre-market shares. So I think it was probably 8.30 in the morning, she, through the app, figured out how to, to uh, get shares at Fidelity in the pre-market. She bought 20 grand worth and she sent me a note um, that at open she made uh, a nice five grand, which I congratulated her on, but I had told her that it's very risky to do this and highly recommended that she not do it because of a whole host of reasons that she could have gotten killed on that trade. So I, um, I bring up the prisoner's dilemma in this case because there's a dilemma. Um, as I was looking at my cell phone, my goal was to sort of read a comment that uh, I got uh, yesterday on this whole situation. Um, uh, uh, hmm. The, the key comment is, uh, she made a comment to me, it's going to be a bumpy ride, but we, we are prepared to hold. Uh, even if we lose it all, the message is loud and clear. So there's a conversation going, obviously, on, on, uh, uh, on Reddit regarding uh, individuals ganging up, putting their money into certain stocks, pushing those prices up and making good money in the process. And... They're using the leverage of a short squeeze to force that stock price even higher and therefore making really good money in the process of destroying the hedge funds that have shorted these stocks. So I was kind of fascinated by this uh, text because I was like, well, wait a second. It's great that you're in with a group of other traders and you've been talking on Reddit and you guys have made a decision and you're doing trades with that. The thing I don't really understand, though, is, wait a second here, this is a prisoner's dilemma. And the prisoner's dilemma is, we have a situation here where you have all these individual actors and you can't control each other's accounts. You're actually just talking with them, hoping that they'll maintain the positions that they said they would. So what can slash will happen is after the stock price starts crashing back to where it started, there are a lot of people who promise to stay who can't afford to lose all their money. So they got to get out. So what the prisoner's dilemma here is, at what point do all these people that got in and they're confident that we'll stay, we want to be strong, we love what we're doing, we want to make a statement, they're all religiously fervored here and that's good. But the problem is, at the end of the day, you've got a company that's going bankrupt and as soon as the uh, euphoria wears off, you guys um, are going to lose a lot of money, if not all your money, depending on the price that you bought in at. And so this, I think, is the prisoner's dilemma, is you have a dilemma. Do you hang on and hopefully make more, or do you hang on and lose all your money? An interesting dilemma that we're kind of working through here. So I wanted to sort of generally run through some of the aspects of what's going on here. What do I think is going to happen? If there isn't an Elon or somebody else to step in and pick up a few billion dollars in stock to solidify the company and therefore not have to go bankrupt, this thing is going to bankruptcy. Uh, is it possible that uh, the short squeeze still occurs and they lose more money or that they, the hedge funds that did stay in lose more money? Absolutely possible. Um, the one other question that you might want to think about is how could you make a little cash here? And I think this calls for something that's called a straddle. So you're actually buying puts and calls and you're just sitting and figuring out which one it's gonna be that's gonna win out and you can make some great money doing it. I took a look at the trade today and for some reason I couldn't get uh, quotes on puts on E-Trade, but um, you know, that's one way to play this if you wanted to make some really good money is to straddle. And you could do so on some of the other stocks like AMC and some of the others as well where I think that would be a good uh, process to consider, but you definitely want to read up on it, think through it, drop us a note. Uh, we do some uh, trade consulting. If you want to uh, look at that, we're on, uh, uh, on our Facebook, uh, Tesla Fan Insight, or uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, uh, we could also sort of initiate dialogue, maybe some trade consulting to think through the process of how to deal with this. So, at any rate, um, I... Uh, I think that there's some money to be made here. 
I do believe that uh, it's very dangerous because of the prisoner's dilemma. When is your partner going to uh, bail on you and leave you holding the bag? And there's no way for you to know because they can just do it in one click of a button. So if you've made money in this situation, congratulations. If you're in it right now, I would be very careful because AMC and some of the other companies mentioned their business models are being destroyed right now. So they're good companies. It's just that because of the pandemic and some of the things that have occurred, it's just not viable for them to stay in business anymore. And I think it's unfortunate, but I think it's a very, very dangerous trade to do unless you have advanced techniques to control how much you might lose. So you definitely want to think it through carefully. One can make money on these companies that have been hit by Reddit, where they're chasing down and wiping out the hedge fund guys. But, um, you know, be gingerly with it because, you know, I, I see the crusade effort by Elon to go after the hedge funds, but uh, I just think that the potential for uh, novices to lose a lot of money uh, is actually very high. And now that the stock has started to decline, this uh, ode to loyalty that had been discussed is going to start crumbling because people who had been making money or had a lot of money they made have to get out in order to preserve what they've uh, earned. And this is where you have the prisoner's dilemma is, should I stay with my buddies and not rat anybody out or should I leave and preserve myself? Great example of how the uh, game theory and prisoner's dilemma operates. I have to say that I'm not an expert on this and I know that I'm gonna get you know, flaming emails regarding what I've said, part of the reason why I didn't wanna discuss it, but I actually have a large group of people that are good friends now and we try to compare notes and learn from each other. So part of it is me doing the show, but the other part of it is that if you read the comments beneath, you'll see that there are a lot of folks who are experts knowledgeable in this area and that can give you some good ideas. I would also recommend that you go back and look at the Goldman Sachs uh, lawsuit that was filed relative to overstock.com because you'll see in there an illustration of how the big banks have been doing this for a long time profitably and to even um, you know seasoned folks like hedge fund managers. So there is a precedent to how all this works. And by reading through cases, it really shows you the technique of how the pros really go after uh, winning in situations as companies go bankrupt in this manner. So, um, you know, we could definitely do more on this if you're interested. I appreciate your taking time to listen. Please take time to like and subscribe. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please remember your 25 leg lifts a day, which I did this morning. Do not go bed, to bed within four hours of eating, minimum two hours. Also wanted to encourage you to think about a 5-2 or some other fasting diet. One of our viewers sent us a note that he and his wife uh, only eat on half the calendar for 15 hours. They don't eat as a fasting process. You know, I've heard good things about that process relative to helping your health. Also wanted to encourage you to consider a 30 SPF or better to avoid um, sun issues. And finally, wanted to encourage you if you're gonna engage in lovemaking to consider, consider uh, having a very light salad or meal that way it doesn't mess up your blood flow relative to uh, those activities which uh, require blood flow as well. So another thing to think about. Um, best of luck in this trade situation. You can make money here, but I think you really have to be organized to make that happen. At uh, any rate, tschüss um, German, au revoir, French, le hitrot, Hebrew, choda, hafez, farsi, srazbiche, hello in Russian, ni hao ma, hello in Chinese, namaste, Hindi, uh, hey do, Swedish, Kumbawa, Japanese, um, uh, hey bueno, el vita, uh, I think Italian, hello, hey man, how you doing? And um, uh, in Jamaica we say, enough respect, walk good, good day, have a great day, bye for now, thanks for joining us.